Good afternoon. My name is Dan Chu. I'm one of the colorectal surgeons here at UAB Hospital. Today we're going to be talking about inflammatory bowel disease and surgical disparities, the worst of the worst. The goals of my talk today is to convince and assure you that inflammatory bowel disease is particularly difficult and hard to manage. I want to highlight some of the surgical outcomes from patients with IBD and then argue further that IBD is particularly challenging for certain populations, including African-American patients. I want to raise the issue of surgical disparities, but at the end of the game here, I want to tell you that for IBD, there are significant opportunities for improvements. So what is IBD? Well, inflammatory bowel disease includes Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. It affects over 1.4 million people in the United States and even more uh, people in Europe. And estimates have thought that in 2008, IBD cost over $6 billion in direct costs and over $5 billion in indirect costs, mainly through losses in work. The disease itself is chronic, it's costly, it's debilitating with sometimes fatal consequences. And most importantly for surgeons, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis patients undergo many operations. In fact, over 75% of Crohn's patients undergo some type of major abdominal operation, including over 25% of patients with ulcerative colitis. Importantly, there is no cure for IBD. Now, as many of you are familiar, Crohn's disease affects anything from the mouth all the way to the anus. It's transmural. The disease itself can stricture. It can cause penetrating, fistulizing disease. It can affect any part of the intestines with significant consequences. Ulcerative colitis is on the other end of the spectrum. It tends to affect only the rectum and the colon itself, but patients here are at very high risk of having cancer. And these, are, these patients undergo uh, an iliopouch anal anastomosis. Uh, it's probably the most common procedure done here. When we think about the management of IBD, it really encompasses two parts. There's a medical aspect and a surgical aspect. As a colorectal surgeon, I deal mainly with the surgical aspect, and that's what we're going to be talking about here today. So IBD, what does it mean for the surgeon? Well, here's a picture from one of our recent cases where you can see intestines, including jejunum, ileum, previous anastomoses, all stuck to each other in a complete maze and mess of intestines. This is what Crohn's can do. The surgery is very hard in these situations. Here's a picture of a colon with major stricturing disease with major obstructions uh, in this patient uh, who ultimately had this removed. And here's another patient with a small segment of small bowel. But what you can see here is that this small piece of small bowel, even though it looks very small and short, is fissualizing all the way up into the left upper quadrant near the spleen and also into the left lower quadrant in the groin. And this patient actually had stool just draining from her groins. So suffice it to say that surgery for Crohn's and for ulcerative colitis can be very challenging. Now, if we take a step back and look at the more global picture of colorectal surgery itself as an entity, colorectal surgery is already challenging. You're dealing with intestines, you're dealing with stools, so the complications are plenty. In fact, if you look at one metric of complications, admission rates, readmission rates, colorectal surgery has one of the highest readmission rates across all general surgical specialties. In this data set, looking at national surgical patients undergoing different procedures as shown here, including bariatric surgery, colectomies, all the way to lower extremity bypasses, what you see here is that patients who undergo colectomy or proctectomies actually have some of the highest readmission rates, over 10%, and the longest length of stay in the hospital after these operations. Not only does colorectal surgery have complications like readmissions, it also has some of the highest surgical site infection rates after colectomies. This is a graph on the y-axis. You can see the surgical site infection rates. It ranges anywhere from five upwards to about 20%. And in fact, the average surgical site infection rate from all these multiple studies is around 11.4% with a wide range all the way up to 23.2%. So this is quite significant. It really just has to do with the fact that these are dirty operations. We're dealing with stool, dealing with connecting intestine to intestines. And so these patients are at high risk for these complications. What's interesting is that IBD is actually just a small part of colorectal surgery. If we were to take another national data set in 2012 and look at the colectomies performed in this data set, essentially a small percentage of patients are undergoing uh, surgery for inflammatory bowel disease shown in blue. 
most of the patients undergoing elective colectomies actually have procedures done for colorectal cancer. Under emergency circumstances, IBD also takes a small proportion, about 5.6% of the cases that are done for emergent colectomies. But despite this small percentage of the pie chart I just show here, IBD actually has the highest readmission rates of all of those different diagnoses. This is a table illustrating uh, from a national data set looking at IBD, which is shown in red, and you can see that IBD has readmission rates of upwards of 15% for overall, for elective cases and emergency cases. And this is all statistically significantly higher. And so this is a very important finding that even though IBD is a small percentage of colectomies and proctectomies in the U.S., they account for the highest readmission rates. Other complications are also significantly higher. Shown here are rates of organ space infections, wound infections, VTEs, and sepsis. And as you can see here, again, IBD patients have significantly higher rates of these type of complications around surgery. So hopefully in those few slides I've shown you, I've been able to at least show you that IBD not only is it difficult to manage, but it's also uh, has significantly worse surgical outcomes compared to other colorectal diagnoses and procedures. Now I'm going to move into a part where I'm going to be talking and arguing that IBD is particularly challenging for certain subsets of popul uh, uh, certain populations, including African American patients. And I want to raise the broader issue of surgical disparities. So the question we pose is, are surgical outcomes worse for certain patients? And the answer is yes. This brings up the concept of surgical disparities, and these exist, and we've been starting to see this more and more often, especially with these national data sets. So colorectal surgery has some of the highest readmission rates. We've already shown some of the data on that. What is interesting is that more recently in the last several years, race itself has been shown to be associated with complications like readmissions. In the analysis of the Medicare database in this paper published two years ago, they stratified patients to black and white across multiple surgeries, not only colectomies, but including cabbages, hysterectomies, orthopedic procedures. And what they found was that there was a adjusted odds ratio or a higher risk of readmissions for patients who were African American. In fact, a 19% higher risk of adjusted odds for 30 day readmission across the board just by race alone. This is a very interesting observation. And to us, meant that if minority patients, specifically African-American patients, have a high risk for complications, and we know from other studies that colorectal surgery itself is at high risk for complications, what happens to patients like African-American patients undergoing surgeries for colectomy or proctectomy? What are their outcomes? And we would hypothesize that they would be poor. So we did a study at UAB looking at about 1,200 patients mm -hmm all with undergoing colectomies here at, uh, at UAB. And this is the distribution of the demographics of our patients. 22.5% of our patients are African American. And this is much higher than what you typically see in national data sets, which really speaks to the location of UAB in the South, where the state of Alabama has actually doubled the average percentage of African Americans in the state. We have about 26% uh, population. Between the two groups, the populations are very similar with respect to patient, surgical, and certain outcomes, such as surgical site infections, but there are major differences too. Patients who were African-American had much higher rates of diabetes, hypertension, BMI, ASA class, poor nutrition with lower prealbumin levels. Patients who were African-American also seemed to undergo more open procedures, more emergent procedures, and interestingly enough, had higher rates of IBD compared to Caucasian patients. This all resulted in outcomes that were much worse for patients who were African-American. They had higher readmission rates, higher length of stay, and several factors in terms of social demographics were also very different. Now, social determinants of health is something that we can look at at an institutional level. And as you can show here, patients who are African-American are shown in yellow. Patients who are Caucasian are shown in green. Uh, patients who were African-American lived closer to the hospital. They had lower home median values. They were less likely to be married. They have social support, less savings, education, total income. So these are important factors that we need to include when we think about why are patients being readmitted. When we constructed models on this, um, excluding social determinants of health, what we found was that patients who were African American had about a 59% increased uh, odds of being readmitted within 30 days after undergoing major colectomy surgeries. 
when we adjusted for these differences in social terms of health, surprising to us, this does not eliminate the risk for readmissions. And in fact, we can conclude from this study that African-American patients undergoing colorectal surgery have about a 53% higher risk adjusted odds for 30-day readmission, despite controlling for differences in support as shown earlier. So this got us to thinking, well, if we have demonstrated here that African-American patients undergoing colectomies had poor outcomes, what happens if we change and look specifically at patients who have IBD? What are their outcomes? We've observed that minority patients have a high risk for complications, and then IBD itself, as I've started to argue, has even higher complications amongst all colorectal procedures. So what are these outcomes? And we expect this also to be worse. And we were able to publish a paper in the last year that asked and addressed this question. We identified IBD patients using a national data set from the American College of Surgeons NISQIP colectomy targeted data set. We excluded patients who died within 30 days as we were looking mainly at 30 day readmissions. And then we looked at the different covariates, including the data elements that are standard in NISQIP. Unfortunately, for national data sets, you have difficulties including social, determinants, social determinants of health. So we were not able to include that into this part, this part of the study. We then conducted multivariate analysis to identify those factors that might be associated with readmissions. And so we looked at about 2,500 patients over two years with a diagnosis of Crohn's or ulcerative colitis and found that the proportion of patients who were African-American is very small, 7.7%. Keep in mind, compared to UAB's cohort, over 20%. But this is more typical for these national data sets. What was interesting was that patients who were African-American actually did have significantly high readmission rates. In fact, the highest readmission rates of over 20%. So one in five patients with IBD undergoing surgery for IBD has a chance of being readmitted to the hospital within 30 days. And so this kind of is what we kind of expected and hypothesized that, that we would find. Not only that, but across the board, patients who were African-American with IBD had significantly more comorbidities as shown here, including higher rates of smoking, uh, higher rates of having Crohn's disease, and there were more complications too. Patients stayed longer, much longer in the hospital. They had more episodes of sepsis, bleeding, and organ space infections. So when we modeled this, we could see that race itself is, again, independently associated with 30-day readmissions. And when we risk adjust for those differences that I've shown earlier, the rate still persists. The risk still persists. So at the ACS NISCOP hospitals within this data set, patients who were African-American and had IBD had about a 60% higher risk adjusted odds for 30-day readmissions. So hopefully I've shown you that IBD is particularly challenging for certain populations, specifically African-American patients. And this is important because while we thought IBD is historically a disease of quote-unquote Caucasian Americans, really this has changed in the last few years and we have seen a much uh, higher rate of IBD now in African-American patients and I expect this to continue. So the last step in this talk is just to raise the issues of surgical disparities. Surgical disparities is going to be a very hot topic I've shown disparities in 30-day readmissions, but we've also shown disparities in length of stay, post-op complications, and even in mortality. And the etiologies for these differences are really not understood. But there is a framework to try to help us gain better understanding, and it's three parts. We have to identify the disparity, we have to understand the disparity, and then we have to reduce the disparity. So what does this mean? Well, identifying the disparity. People tend to look at national data, at institutional data, just like we have, and look at certain outcomes, things like mortality, complications, length of stay, readmissions. And suffice it to say that if in any of these specific outcomes, there are disparities that are out there within surgery and even not within surgery fields. The next step in the disparities is to understand this, and this might be the, one of the hardest parts, but there are some frameworks out there. This is a framework that was put out there a few years ago in terms of looking at patient provider and system level factors that might explain why there are disparities in certain outcomes. Now, from a, from a system standpoint, this, is, um, uh, th this helps policy uh, develop, but a lot of work has been done at the system level looking at access. Do patients, do certain patients of, with no insurance, for example, have certain access to hospitals or lack of access, and that's why their outcomes are worse than other patients. So at the system level, a lot of work has been done. 
Similarly, at the provider level, uh, a lot of research has also been done in terms of looking at the effect of high volume surgeons, for example, or access to high volume surgeons. Perhaps patients who are African American don't have access to, this, to the expert surgeon uh, in a certain field, and that's why their outcomes are worse. Well, one of the last kind of uh, area is with respect to the patient side. And I think a less work has been done here focusing on the patient, at the patient level. Uh, is there, are there factors here that can contribute to why there are disparities? Things like social support, education, finance. Uh, these determinants of health are, are, are unclear in an area of a lot of research right now. The last step of disparities is trying to reduce it. This is the ultimate step. How do you actually reduce disparities? Well, at UAB, we've been fortunate to implement a program called Enhanced Recovery After Surgery over the last year. And this is a program that takes care of the patients from the very beginning, when you first meet them in the, uh, in the clinic, all the way through the operating room and to the post-op period. And it standardizes and assures and encourages that the same type of care is delivered to, this, to the patient over and over again. What's interesting is that in our studies, we can see that patients before ERAS, this is about 2014, had significant disparities in length of stay. So shown in the blue there, or in the teal, is uh, our patients who are, who are African American. They stayed in the hospital not only longer than the baseline expected length of stay, which is shown by this line, but they stayed in the hospital almost two days longer than patients who are Caucasian, controlling for complications and comorbidities. So this was happening before we implemented ERAS. But when we implemented ERAS, what's interesting is that this disparity is completely eliminated, if not reversed, and both patients, Caucasian and African-American patients, stay less than the expected length of stay. So at UAB, we've observed that the previous disparities in post-op length of stay seems to be reduced with ERAS. And this is still unclear to, to exactly which part of ERAS is most important, but it's a very active area of research for us. Disparities research will continue. The American College of Surgeons, the NIH, have put out uh, a lot of uh, uh, programs now recently that, that will be directing funding into the areas of surgical disparities. And a paper just came out in JAMA Surgery uh, helping guide some of the future research into this uh, area. So in summary, I think I've hopefully shown you that IBD is challenging to manage. And even in mean, colorectal surgery amongst the different type of procedures, IBD is particularly challenging and has particularly worse outcomes. Surgical disparities exist across the board, but certain populations are at, are, are, suffer more from this. And in particular, this studies, as I've shown, African-American patients, but in particular with IBD, have particularly worse outcomes. So there's a big opportunity for improvement in this area. We really don't understand the etiology of these disparities, but we have a framework, and a lot of our future research right now is focused on understanding patient-level determinants of uh, patient-level determinant factors that might contribute to these disparities, and also looking at things like behavioral determinants of health. Bottom line, in IBD, there's a significant opportunity for improvement, and here at UAB, we have a multidisciplinary team that manages the complex patients with IBD, uh, and so if there's any questions, we'd be happy to, uh, uh, please feel free to email me or to uh, message me, uh, and I'll be happy to answer any questions.